May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness, the creator of creation. These are the opening words of St. Patrick's breastplate contained in the ancient book of Arma, where Patrick served as the first bishop. St. Patrick is said to have written this prayer to strengthen himself with God's protection as he prepared to confront and to convert Langer, the High King of Ireland. Like most of what surrounds Patrick, we are not sure whether he was successful. Some say yes, some say no, some say no, but he was successful in converting two of the king's daughters. What we do know is that the prayer Patrick acting on his faith, composed before confronting the High King, calls upon the strength of the Trinity to protect him, much the way one would rely upon armor. Hence the title, St. Patrick's Breastplate. It is, as prayers go, rather long and somewhat involved. Still, it is a prayer that is offered in great faith and certainty in the power of the triune God and to be honest, is a much stronger illustration of the depth of Patrick's faith in the Trinity than teaching about the Trinity using shamrocks, which Patrick is also said to have done, but seems to be more myth and legend than actual fact. St. Patrick's breastplate is a prayer that comes from a deep and abiding faith in creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, the three in one and the one in three. For the past several weeks, our gospel passages have come from the Gospel of John, and almost all of them from the discourse in the upper room on the disciples last night before Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. Today's lesson is no exception. And much the same as the gospel passage from last Sunday, Pentecost, and the Sunday before that, Jesus is attempting to explain to the remaining 11 that they will not be alone as they set out into the world to preach the good news of God in Christ to the ends of the earth. What is different for us is that as we listen to these words is the fact that we know that the Spirit indeed came to the disciples, and more importantly, through faith, we know that the Spirit remains with us. As for the disciples, they still don't fully comprehend what Jesus was telling them. God in three persons. And to be truthful, we don't always get this one either. I remember very clearly sitting in the high school Sunday school class. Yes, I went to Sunday school through high school in an Episcopal church. And our parish curate, Father Turton, was attempting to instruct us on the Trinity. I'm quite sure that we must have seemed to him very much like the clueless disciples as he patiently began his lesson. And then he stopped. He looked at us and told us not to worry, that we would never fully understand the doctrine of the Trinity, because in order to fully understand someone or something, you had to be at least equal to or better than. None of us, he told us, will ever be equal to or better than God. We can't fully understand the Trinity but rather we can embrace the Trinity through our faith. What a relief. And that brings us back to Patrick, who must have understood that as he called on his faith to invoke the Trinity, rather than his trying to explain its existence through shamrocks. Embracing the Trinity through our faith. A comforting place to be secure as you set out to encounter any sort of challenge the Spirit may be leading you to discover. 
Or perhaps it's an uplifting place as you look upon the challenges and the struggles and the triumph of others. For example, a few years ago, Bill and I were on a river cruise on the Danube that took us from Bucharest to Budapest. Our guide in Bucharest began to share stories of what life was like behind the Iron Curtain. She told us the things we thought we'd hear about, food scarcity and the controlled media and lack of choice. And then she began to tell us how they managed to keep their faith alive during the communist regime. She spoke of two wedding services, the secular service celebrated in public and the orthodox service held in the home with few present and curtains tightly drawn. Baptisms were celebrated in the same way the priest smuggled in the back door. Last rites as well. We kept our faith alive until we were able to bring it out into the open once again, she told us. I asked her if I could use her story in a sermon, and she happily agreed, telling me that it was their faith, their breastplate, if you will, that gave them the strength to endure the world behind the Iron Curtain. And it didn't stop in Romania. In Belgrade, Serbia, we visited the Temple of St. Salva. Founded in the 13th century, St. Salva's was ransacked by Turkish invaders in 1594. With Belgrade under Turkish occupation for the next 300 years, St. Salva's remained in ruins. Still, faith was active among its people, and with the liberation from the Turks, a commission to rebuild the church took shape. Building began and was paused while things needed to be put on hold for World War I, World War II, the formation of Yugoslavia, and finally, the post-liberation wars. Through all of this, the people remained devoted to restoring their place of worship. And although it still remains a work in progress, it is a formidable testament to the faith and the trust of its people in the triune God at the heart of their belief. And then there was Bulgaria, where I learned that Christians literally went underground to worship during the many and varied occupations that they have endured sustained by their faith and surrounded by the love of the triune God. So here we are, one week after Pentecost, one week after the disciples and by extension us, we're told that our responsibility to bring the kingdom of God is meant to take place beyond our doors. Standing on that bridge between here and out there, it should be easy to just follow where the spirit is leading us right? It should be easy. But standing on that bridge, begin to understand how Patrick must have felt as he set out to confront and convert the High King, or how the Christians behind the Iron Curtain felt for the world on the other side of the bridge kept changing, and never for the better. As we stand on the bridge, looking out to the world beyond, it is a daunting landscape at best. It is at all times, but especially times that seem particularly fraught with risk, that we need to employ our faith, embrace the Trinity. And in doing so, remember that we are surrounded by the strength of the Trinity and the unconditional love of God. Today, we celebrate the only time we celebrate doctrine over event. But today we celebrate that our faith assures us that we are surrounded by the love of God, God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the threeness and the oneness. So as Patrick did, and as the Christians that were once behind the Iron Curtain did, we too will go forth into the world in the assurance by faith that the love of the triune God surrounds us. Amen.